Hey guys, Jim here. Time for another Saturday night wine and knives discussion. Take a nice little sip. Hmm. And I apologize, I haven't really been doing a lot of the more discussion type of videos lately. I've been very concentrated on, you know, pumping out a lot of videos lately. Uh, the past two weeks has been insane. Uh, between personal acquisitions and, of course, the overwhelming popularity of the new Guest Blade episodes that I really haven't had time to really just kind of sit down and, you know, just kind of bullshit with you for a while. So I'm going to take that time tonight. It's been a wonderful evening. Had a chance to relax a little bit after work tonight. And I got to thinking about a few things, some things that I've discussed with a few of my friends that I'll bring into this uh, video tonight and a few things that just kind of popped up on my head that I you know just kind of wanted to discuss a little bit uh, first off you guys know that uh, I've had some great acquisitions lately we'll talk about that in a little bit but it's just been so much fun lately just some really good you know offerings that have been made available over the past few weeks that just couldn't say no to and a few of those are out here you guys know the the whole back quay back of course I got my tannic the two RJ Martin Q36s. I did send the third one out to a friend of mine. Uh, there's a, oh, the Jason Clark that was uh, gifted to me. This thing is just, if you haven't seen the video on this yet, you really need to, uh, to go check it out. This knife is just exceptional in every possible way. I couldn't be uh, more pleased or more excited about it. And liquid smooth. Just Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to get up into one discussion first. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine, a, another rather, uh, I shouldn't say another, I don't consider myself in that league, but uh, a rather prolific collector himself. And we were talking about the very, very, very few makers that require prepayment and how that's kind of a big turnoff. And, you know, I don't want to alienate anybody. Everybody's going to run their businesses in different ways. And I'm not telling you how to do so. But when you look at certain makers out there, the, the absolute biggest names, I mean, if, if, if you want to, you know, start throwing out the names, you know, like the, the Todd Fisher that I just reviewed uh, of Justin's, you look at Brad Southard's of the world, the, you know, the, whomever, they don't take prepayment. You know, I just got on, uh, I was actually, I'm not going to mention that one. I was fortunate enough to get on to somebody's books that were closed and have been closed for a while. So I'm not going to get into that. Um, who did I just get in with? Kirby Lambert. You guys know I have an Orion MGT on the way and it got me more and more excited. So I figured, you know, I'm going to try. I'm going to shoot the, shoot the guy a message and, and see what he says. And his books are open. It's just at least a year out. And he says, sure, you know, I'm happy to put you on there. Give me a list of, you know, what you're thinking of doing and we'll see what we can do. There's no discussion of prepayment. There's not even a discussion of a deposit to pay for materials. Uh, same thing. I was so unbelievably fortunate to get onto uh, GTC's list. Now, I probably won't be notified for a year to two years that my turn is up, but I don't give a shit. I mean, it's it's a friggin' GTC. And again, thank you, uh, wow, to uh, to my buddy Brian, who basically got Gus and I together. Gus just sent me a, a Facebook request uh, out of nowhere. Like, I didn't even know the man was on Facebook. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll make room for you and throw you on my friends list. And we messaged back and forth a few times. What a, what a wonderfully nice guy. And, you know, there was no discussion of, of you know, send me money. And these are guys that are taking orders a year and two years out, getting a little bit more recent. Somebody like Dave Curtis. You know, his books are closed right now, but it's only for a very short amount of time. He's about ready to open them back up. You know, Dave's anywhere from three weeks to maybe two months uh, of a wait. He doesn't ask for money up front. And this is the way it always has been. Chris Martin, don't have to pay up front. I don't know what Jeff's policies are. I had already prepaid uh, for my Tannic, so I'm not going to uh, throw that into the mix. Um, what else do I have sitting out here? Uh, Direware, I do not believe, uh, asks you to make a prepayment. Now, I really can't think of anybody uh, 
that I deal with. There's only one that I deal with that does, and that's uh, Medford Knife. And that's an entirely different setup and situation. You know, your money's tied up for four to six months there if you want to pre-order something. I'm not going to say that that's a good thing or a bad thing from him. Uh, his knives are certainly worth the wait, and they're certainly worth the money. But the way I look at it is, let's talk about the smaller makers. I think this would really affect them the most. And you would think, let's say a guy like uh, Kirby Lambert. One knife sale for $800 to $1,500. He calls you up and says, or emails you and says, okay, your, your turn is up. Uh, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling on this. And I'm going to start making your knife. And you respond back, oh, man, oh, I kind of forgot all about it. That was a year ago I booked that with you. And, you know, things have changed. And I, I, I'm going through a divorce. And my puppy died. And um, I just found out I have uh, uh, ass cancer. You know, whatever. And... I would assume that a smaller maker like that, who's a one-man operation, can't that can't pump out, you know, 500 knives a year or anything like that, that that would more greatly affect him than a larger business. Or, you know, let's, let's use Todd Begg for an example. You know, they pump out a lot of knives. He's got a lot of employees and they do a lot of hard work. If for some reason, when my turn comes up for the Glimpse 5.0, I've been on the list since they first opened it. And if, if that time comes around and I go, oh, geez, you know what, man? Yeah, I just can't do it. He's not going to go cry in his beer. He has a huge list of people that would want to buy his products. Even if he called up everybody he knew and everybody went, no, mass ass cancer. Nobody can afford to buy a knife right now. He knows that he can make a video on YouTube or put up a listing on his own forum or whatever else. And that knife would be snatched up within minutes or hours. So it's not that big of a deal. These smaller guys that don't take prepayment, that don't ask you to send them money even as a deposit, don't you think it would affect them more greatly? And one of the things I discuss a, a lot with a, a couple of different knife makers is the fact that knife makers are not business people. Generally speaking, you know, you get somebody like uh, maybe Elliot at Ferrum Forge. He has a, a firm grasp on what needs to be done on the business end. But that's also why he has a partner. So he doesn't have to do all that stuff. But he understands what it takes to run a successful business. And you look at a lot of these makers and they just don't get it. They don't get how easy it is to turn a customer off. I've ordered from people that have barely spoken English that are in other countries. I mean, I'm, I'm on the books with Poltergeist and I'm on the books with uh, EB Knives. I mean, they're just, they have no concept of, of what you're really trying to say. And even they're not saying, send me money up front. I live in a totally different country. I could easily just flake off on them by not answering an email. They don't know about my YouTube channel. They don't know uh, of other ways to get in contact with me or somehow sully my name for leaving them high and dry. They just go, okay, I'm going to take it on faith. This guy wants the knife. So, yeah, it's aggravating to me. And I, I think I've resigned myself to the fact that I will no longer order from a maker that requires prepayment. That's just the way it is. I mean, when, when the absolute greatest makers in the entire industry will take your order and not take your money until the order is done, that should set the precedent. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. I would even go as far as like what Yuna does. I love Yuna's uh, way of doing business. You contact him. He asks you precisely what do you want? What materials do you need? And your name goes into his books. When your ticket comes up and he contacts you, he asks you for a small deposit. This is just to cover the cost of my materials. Your knife will be ready in the next 30 days. You know what? I can deal with that. My money's being tied up for 30 days. I, I'm okay with that. But when you're telling me six months or a year that I'm going to wait and you want me to pay you now, I don't know what's going to happen in the next year. I don't. I don't know what my financial needs are going to be in the interim. I don't know what uh, your business is going to go through in the interim. I don't want to give you my money for a year to help support your business with other people. Because it, it, it's not like you're taking that money and putting it in a special little savings account that says Jimmy's money. No, 
That money's getting spent on whoever the next guy's knife is, buying his Timascus or buying his carbon fiber or, or, or whatever else it is. And then when my turn comes up, it's, it's the poor schmuck that just paid you a week ago. His money's going into my project. I'll be damned if I, I'm going to believe that my money a year from now is still my money sitting there. Now, to be fair, I don't know of any maker that won't give you a full refund before they've purchased or made the materials for your knife. If you were to call them three months before your time is, is coming up and say, hey, dude, you know what? Uh, oh, that's cancer. They'll give you your money back. I've never heard of one that didn't. So I, I want to try and be as unbiased as I can. But on the, the same side of that coin, I don't care. You know, there, there are so many great makers out there and so many wonderful opportunities that present themselves almost on a daily basis. I'm just not going to let you borrow my money for a year anymore. So that's kind of my feelings on that. I'd love to hear how you guys feel. And, and, and don't, don't just say, well, that's the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. There, there's too much precedent out there to prove that that does not need to be the way the business is run. And if maker A says, that's the only way I'm going to do it, I'll go to maker B. And I'll have maker B make me some really nice knives. My money will get spent somewhere. For those of you that uh, aren't on Instagram yet, y'all need to get your asses over there. I'm telling you what, it's a fantastic community. And I got to give, uh, again, a huge thank you to my friend, uh, Vance Rhodes. Because Vance twisted my arm and made me get out over there. And now that I am, oh my God, it's so amazing. Not only do you get such a vibrant and wonderful and fun-filled community of knife collectors, but all the good makers are out there too, man. Oh, Jake Hoback is posting out there. Uh, John Gray is posting out there. Elliot is now posting out there. And there's a lot of little makers, even makers that I had never heard of, that I see out there. And I've learned more about the knives that they offer as a result of having an Instagram account. Here's what you do. Just sign up. Um, look for me. My, my Instagram name is Jim Skelton TV. And, you know, follow me. Follow me and then go see the list of people that I follow and go follow them. I know that sounds like I'm inviting you to be creepy. I don't mean uh, put war paint on your face and go hide in somebody's bushes. You do that on your own time. You don't need me to tell you to do that shit. But yeah, go follow those guys because I'm telling you, man, it is one awesome community. You know, Instagram today is what the YouTube knife community was uh, probably a year or so ago. And I see a lot of people that are spending less time uploading videos on YouTube and more time uploading content to Instagram because it's a quick, easy daily thing. We can all take a quick picture with our cell phone of our favorite knife of that day and discuss it with our friends. It takes a lot less time than to sit down in front of a video camera and sit here and do what I'm doing. So yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, I get loose out there, man. I get loose. I get goofy. <laughs> As some of my more recent videos have displayed, we just have fun. It's an awesome group of people. It really is. So uh, definitely do that. Definitely sign up on Instagram if you haven't already. It's a, it's a crap load of fun. Uh, something I'm very excited about right now is getting closer and closer and closer to my predium becoming a reality. For those that may not somehow know about it, the predium is a mid-tech knife being offered by uh, Elliot Williamson at, at Ferrum Forge. And I find that knife to be so intriguing and, and somewhat amusing to me uh, because here, here are our dear friend, the lovable Elliot thought to himself one day, I am a custom knife maker and I make damn good knives. But not enough people out there have had a chance to become exposed to my product because, well, I'm a custom knife maker and my prices, uh, you know, go along with the work that I do. So I'm going to do something cool. I'm going to make a mid-tech knife. And the reason why I find that amusing is y'all ain't getting a mid-tech knife. You are getting as close to a custom 
as you can possibly imagine. That boy is putting so much work into those knives, it's not even funny. And it's uh, not coincidental that I'm holding up my tough tannic while I'm talking about that because Jeff just did the same thing. This is a freaking custom, man. Yeah, they may have water jetted the frame out. But he did everything by hand. I mean, he even contoured the frames, brought them down, did all kinds of crazy. Even, even the part that was water jetted, he put a hell of a lot more work into than he should have. Everything on here was completely custom as per my order and our brainstorming together and his great ideas. This was, and everything just came together perfectly. And that's kind of what Elliot's doing. And I'm really excited because, you know, I, the funny thing is I'm the most impatient guy in the world. That's just the way it is. Uh, yet I'm number 100 out of 100. So I'm the guy whose knife gets built last, which is crazy for me. But I kind of like it because I won't have to go through this again. Y'all know what I'm talking about, where mine was number three. Everybody got a chance to see the pictures and the video and everything. And then Jeff's phone started ringing off the hook. Make me one like Jim's. Make me one like Jim's. No, don't, don't, don't make one like Jim's. No. Have your own unique knife. So at least I know with my Predium, I'm one of only two or three people that have custom orders in on our Prediums, and Bob already got his. What I'm doing to mine, nobody else is going to do because they don't know what I'm doing. I can't show mine until the entire run is over with, so that's fun. So congratulations to Elliot for the uh, very quick success on that. Uh, I do want to let you guys know, he just mentioned in a recent video, that a couple of people have been dropping off of his list. So if you keep in contact with him, he might have one come available and be able to contact you and sell it to you. Folks, you're getting a knife that he would have probably charged closer to $900 for as, a, as one of his hand-built customs. You'd be getting for $450. That's a really huge deal. And with only 100 being made, you're in very exclusive company on a really, really cool knife. And here's the thing. If you hate it, if for some reason you get it and go, oh, what Jim is smoking wacky shit, man. I can't stand this thing. I guarantee you're going to flip that thing for a profit because so many people want one and can't get one. So it's almost like uh, Ferris Bueller can't lose. No, who was it? It was Parker Lewis can't lose. See, I went and screwed it all up. Parker Lewis can't lose. I do want to make a quick note here. I noticed on a recent video that Jake Hoback uploaded, uh, he had made a comment that there were a, a lot of very, very loud and upset people that are on the list for a Quayback that's well over a year long. They were really pissed off that I got one and that I just got mine last week. Here's the deal, guys. I want to be very clear on something. Uh, yes. Jake and I discussed it, that I'd be doing photography on it, that I'd be doing a review on it. You guys know me. I'm only going to be honest. I say what I like, and I say what I don't like about everything I own right here. And I paid for it. And I paid a premium for it. I didn't get it for the price that, like, Jeff got his for and, and everybody else got theirs for. I paid a premium. And here's the other thing, and probably the most important thing to note you wouldn't have gotten this anyway if you were on that list. Because as I very clearly detailed in my review, this was a knife he brought with him to take to the Blade Show. And we know that the, the three or four Quaybacks he brought sold instantly on Friday before anybody even got in there. They were done and gone. This would have been gone too. You would have never gotten this because it would have been sold that day with the other ones that you also didn't get. So, I mean, don't jump on Jake. He's, he's not doing anything wrong. This was a piece he couldn't sell, he couldn't put out on his table at Blade because there was an issue with the Blade. He wasn't going to let it go out like that. And it sat there for, well, how long has Blade been over? Almost three months now? He didn't even remember he had it. And through our conversations, during that time we were conversing, he came across these handles and went, well, you know, I can, I can do up another Blade and this and that, and we can just do it that way. So don't be upset with Jake. Because had this knife been the way he wanted it to begin with, it would have sold a blade and you wouldn't have known about it to begin with. So get off, get off Hoback's back. He's a super nice guy. And I'm telling you, it's worth the wait. When you guys get that knife, you're going to be absolutely blown away. Man, I've already soaked up a hell of a lot of time here. I'm a time passage must be altered uh, due to the wine. 
not going to get a chance to cover everything I want to cover. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to do a two-parter tonight. I've never done that before on one of my little rambling videos. I'm going to do a two-parter. And the only reason being, there's something in this friggin' camera that cuts me off at right around 23 minutes or so. I have no way to change that setting. There is no setting to change. So I'm going to cut it off here. Stay tuned. I'm going to be uploading these at the same time. Part two should be ready. Definitely by the time you get finished watching part one here. So I'll be right back.